Wouldn't it be great if there was one bit of kit that could heat and cool your home? Of course there is air-to-air -air heat pumps. Not so common in the UK, but extremely popular elsewhere. So we're here at the British Columbia Institute of Technology just outside of Vancouver to find out more. Welcome to the Everything Electric show. Love Everything Electric? Join us live in Canada this September, the South in October, and Australia and London in 2025. Of course, there are two different types of air source heat pump, air to air and air to water. In Europe, the US and Canada, air to air heat pumps actually represent the vast majority of installations and they are the most cost effective way to heat and cool your home. The majority of homes in the UK have radiators or underfloor heating, so actually you'll find air to water heat pumps are much more common as it stands. The UK also has a boiler upgrade scheme where you can actually access a grant of £7,500 to install an air to water heat pump. And that as yet doesn't cover air to air heat pumps. We think it probably should, and we're here to find out more about the technology today. We're back at BCIT's High Performance Lab where they're working to make buildings as energy efficient as possible and ultimately zero emission. Here in the Zero Energy Building Lab, we've developed a program that where we can take gas fitters who've been installing uh, boilers, furnaces and hot water tanks and get them up to speed on being able to install heat pumps. So, what is an air-to-air -air heat pump? Air-to-air -air heat pumps extract heat from the air outside and transfer it into your home through a ventilation fan system. The air increases in temperature thanks to a compressor and refrigerant and is powered efficiently by electricity. The heating process can also be reversed for cooling purposes. Working in much the same way as a refrigerator, the air-to-air -air heat pump extracts heat from the air inside your home and releases it outside. Air-to-air -air heat pumps are similar to air conditioning but are usually more efficient as they pump out more cool and warm air by volume than the energy it takes to run them. There's a broad range of different types of heat pumps um, that can be installed. Um, if we're talking about air-to-air -air heat pumps specifically, then we could have a one-to-one -one mini split where you might have a wall-mounted unit with one outdoor unit. Um, there'll be a variety of different configurations, but we could have um, a wall-mounted head, we can have ceiling-mounted heads, we can have mini-ducted systems. Um, we can add to that, as long as the outdoor unit is capable, uh, to have multiple indoor units. And we can, we can basically have a zone in every room if we wanted to. Um, those systems can get quite expensive, but if that's the concern that uh, we be highly zoned, then we can definitely do that with uh, separate refrigeration lines to each individual unit in a specific room. What type of properties is our air-to-air -air heat pumps suitable for? We have a lot of forced air systems uh, in Canada and where we had furnaces heating the home. And so they have duct systems that run throughout the house, they call them central systems. And so their air-to-air -air heat pumps are great for that. Um, and so they can heat the entire house or an area of the house. And how do you know what size of system you'll need? Well, that's an important part. Uh, you don't want to oversize or undersize a heat pump. So we have um, a methodology, a standard that we use to calculate what the heat loss and heat gain of uh, the home is. And so we encourage people to get the contractor to use that software. But really, the only way you know for sure is by measuring the performance of the house. You need to take into account how well insulated the walls are, what type of windows you have, how much air leakage the building has, and taking all those components in will give you the actual value that, uh, for heating and cooling that you need. One of the questions we get about air to water heat pumps is how noisy are they? And they're not that noisy, but is there any difference with air to air heat pumps? No, not really. There, some heat pumps are noisier than others. Now, the modern ones will uh, move air from the out back of the heat pump to the front of the heat pump, and so there's very little turbulence and much quieter, but most heat pumps are about the same noise level as a refrigerator or dishwasher. Great, that's reassuring. And, and costs, I guess that's the thing that people ask. How long is a piece of string? How much do they cost? Well, it, it depends <laughs> on the size of the system you need and the complexity of the installation. We're big fans of all types of electrification of heating, but the heat pump has something special, doesn't it, in terms of the coefficient of performance. Why does that mm. make heat pumps the, the kind of silver bullet for heating? 
So the coefficients of performance uh, can get as high as six, but on a seasonal basis, I'm comfortable in saying that we, sh we can get two and a half, three, three and a half, somewhere in there. So that means that there's one unit of energy, electricity, that goes into running the equipment to allow three and a half units of heat to be released in the home. So many times more efficient than a boiler. Many times. So again, we cover air to water an awful lot on our Everything Electric channel. We've seen them work well in Scandinavia, which is pretty cold, I understand it. Mm -hmm. Air to air, how do they work in, in colder climates? They work as well, if n perhaps a little bit better. There are many manufacturers that have, um, well, not many, but a few manufacturers have ones that will operate down to minus 35 degrees Celsius. Um, so they're <clears throat> they won't give you full capacity at that temperature, but they're still able to pull heat out of the air and put it into the house at those temperatures. We're using them up in Yellowknife in the Yukon, so they can work in cold weather. It's, you just have to take that into account in the design. And the, they would typically have supplement, supplementary heating systems that would augment the heat pump when the heat pump couldn't provide the full capacity. And you had a quite scary heat dome situation in Vancouver not so long ago. How do they cope with you know, cooling in extreme temperatures? Many people rushed out to get heat pumps as a result of that in 2021. Um, it, was, it was very hot and a lot of people suffered from it, um, many people dying. And so heat pumps can provide the cooling that we've, most people are used to air conditioners, um, but heat pump can provide the cooling as well as the heating. So they can provide relief in those hot temperatures. In the UK, we have something called the boiler upgrade scheme but air-to-air -air heat pumps are not supported. Is there anything in Canada that policy supports these technologies? Are there any incentives? Yes, we do have incentives for heat pumps. Uh, the federal program is being revitalized, uh, but we have provincial programs that provide incentives for both air-to-water systems um, that would replace a boiler system that you're describing or a, an air-to-air -air system that would replace a furnace system. What level of uptake are you seeing in British Columbia now on, on heat pumps? Has it increased significantly? It has. It's overall, it's a fairly small percentage. They are very popular and it's a good news, bad news story. The contractors are crazy busy. Uh, it has driven up the prices a little bit, but um, it'll settle out and people recognize that the advantages of getting a heat pump rather than say a furnace and an air conditioner far outweigh the, the costs and over time um, we'll see those costs drop as they become more and more uh, common in, uh, in replacement in particular. As this episode has shown, air-to-air -air heat pumps have huge advantages. As the world changes, we can see that heating and cooling properties more and more efficiently is going to become increasingly important. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please leave your comments below, like and subscribe. And if you have been, thank you for watching.